endocrinology and diabetes basics the pituitary gland understanding the pituitary gland is probably the hardest part of endocrinology as it controls most of the endocrine glands in the body and disease may arise due to both over secretion and under secretion of a particular hormone a full understanding of the hormonal tests in this section will make interpretation of the endocrine tests in the rest of the book an easy and pleasant experience anatomy the pituitary gland is situated in the pituitary fossa and is surrounded by sphenoid air sinus below cavernous sinus and carotid artery on the either side the pituitary stalk extending into hypothalamus above physiology the pituitary gland can be functionally divided into two lobes the anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary the anterior pituitary produces the following hormones growth hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone gonadotrophins that is fsh and lh thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotrophin prolactin growth hormone results in skeletal growth adrenocorticotrophic hormone stimulates the adrenal glands to produce steroids fsh and lh stimulate the testicles or ovaries to produce sex hormones tsh stimulates the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones prolactin stimulates breast milk production now coming to the posterior pituitary which stores the hormones produced in the hypothalamus and they are anti diuretic hormone which stimulates water reabsorption by the kidneys oxytocin which helps uterine contraction during labor the anterior pituitary gland is under the control of the hypothalamus as shown below corticotrophin releasing hormone stimulates acth secretion growth hormone releasing hormone stimulates growth hormone secretion thyrotrophin releasing hormone stimulates tsh secretion gonadotrophin releasing hormone stimulates fsh and lh secretion prolactin releasing hormone does not exist and prolactin is under the inhibitory effect of the hypothalamus and it is in under the inhibitory effect of dopamine cortisol growth hormone thyroid hormones and sex, sex hormones all have a negative feedback effect on corresponding pituitary and hypothalamic releasing hormones clinical disease clinical disease results from over secretion or under secretion of pituitary hormones in addition to the local compressive effects of a pituitary tumor a pituitary tumor may secrete excessive hormones but it may also be non functional in which case the clinical presentation consists of pituitary failure associated with compressive effects or mass effect pituitary over secretion usually due to pituitary tumors over producing one hormone sometimes more than one resulting in typical clinical entities which are described below very rarely over production of pituitary hormones may be due to increased production of a pituitary hormone releasing hormones that is crh ghrh etc acquired pituitary deficiency or pituitary failure is commonly due to a pituitary tumor compressing and compromising the activity of normal cells it may also be secondary due to developmental abnormalities autoimmune conditions head injury vascular disorders and severe blood loss resulting in infarction of the pituitary one such example is during uh, labor infiltrative disease and infections can also cause pituitary failure for example sarcoidosis tuberculosis radiotherapy can also cause pituitary failure it should be noted that pituitary hormonal deficiency commonly involves multiple hormones and therefore deficiency of one hormone warrants full pituitary investigations local effects of a, of all pituitary tumors include headaches visual field defects usually bitemporal 
hemianopia, deficiency of other hormones due to pressure effect on normal pituitary tissue, cranial nerve palsies of 3rd, 4th and 6th in large pituitary tumors, investigations of the pituitary gland. This involves investigations of hormonal abnormalities and imaging of the pituitary gland. Hormonal investigations of suspected pituitary hormone abnormality. In general, there are three ways to investigate hormonal abnormalities in endocrine disease. Static hormone measurements. This is one of measurement of a particular hormone. Examples include measurement of thyroid function, TSH and T4, gonadal function, sex steroids and gonadotrophins, and measurement of prolactin. Stimulation tests. If deficiency of a particular hormone is suspected, stimulation tests are carried out. Failure of a particular hormone level to rise after stimulation tests confirms hormonal deficiency. Examples include growth hormone and cortisol deficiency. Suppression test. If over secretion of a hormone is suspected, sup suppression tests can be carried out. Failure of suppression of a particular hormone indicates overproduction. Examples include growth hormone over secretion such as acromegaly and ACTH over secretion in Cushing's disease. Static pituitary function tests. They include thyroid function tests, low free T4 or FT4 with low or low normal TSH. This should alert to the possibility of pituitary failure. Differential diagnosis includes abnormal TFTs due to non-thyroidal illnesses. Raised TSH and raised FT4 that shows possible TSH secreting pituitary tumor. Raised TSH with low or normal FT4, this should indicate primary hypothyroidism. Suppressed TSH with high or normal FT4 indicates towards primary hyperthyroidism. Next is sex hormones tests. Low sex hormones with low or low normal gonadotrophins that is FSH and LH should raise the possibility of pituitary failure. High sex steroids with elevated gonadotrophin suggests gonadotrophin secreting pituitary tumor. These are rare and often clinically silent. Low sex hormones with raised gonadotrophins indicate primary gonadal failure and this is seen in physiological menopause. Women above the age of 50 usually have raised gonadotrophin levels with low estradiol. Prolactin test. Raised serum prolactin may be due to a pituitary prolactinoma. This is fully discussed later. Stimulation tests in suspected hypopituitarism. The two main stimulation tests used are insulin stress test. This is the gold standard test to assess pituitary function but it has a number of contraindications and therefore it is not always used first line. Insulin injection results in hypoglycemia creating a stressful environment with consequent release of ACTH and growth hormone. 0.1 to 0.3 unit per kg of insulin is injected. High doses are required in those with insulin resistance. So the insulin is injected to render the patient hypoglycemic and growth hormone and cortisol are measured. Growth hormone above the uh, level of 20 milli international unit per liter and cortisol above the level of 580 nanomole per liter indicate adequate hormonal reserve. Contraindications for this test is history of epilepsy, abnormal ECG or ischemic heart disease, untreated hypothyroidism, basal cortisol less than 100 nanomole per liter. Glucagon stimulation test. Injection of glucagon results in release of growth hormone and ACTH. The, the test is not always reliable. Up to 20% of normal individuals fail to fully respond. And in case of any doubts, insulin stress test 
should be performed. Contraindications are uh, this test is less reliable in subjects with diabetes. And growth hormone above the level of 20 milli international unit per liter or cortisol above 580 nanomole per liter indicate normal growth hormone and ACTH reserve. Other stimulation tests. These are quite specialized and beyond the scope of this discussion. These include TRH stimulation test, GNRH stimulation test, arginine stimulation test, suppression tests in the suspected hormonal overproduction, oral glucose tolerance test. This is used in suspected growth hormone over secretion. Failure to suppress growth hormone to less than 2 milli international unit per liter after 75 gram of oral glucose tolerance test is strongly suggests the diagnosis of acromegaly. Dexamethasone suppression test. This is used to diagnose Cushing's syndrome but may also be able to differentiate between pituitary and non-pituitary causes of Cushing's, uh, Cushing's syndrome. Low dose dexamethasone suppression test. Failure to suppress cortisol to less than 50 nanomole per liter after giving 0.5 mg of dexamethasone 6 hourly for 2 days suggests the diagnosis of Cushing's syndrome. Suppression of cortisol to more than 50% of basal levels after giving 2 mg of dexamethasone 6 hourly for 2 days suggests pituitary cause that is Cushing's disease. Imaging of the pituitary gland Magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, this is the gold standard for imaging of the pituitary gland. Combination of imaging with stimulation tests. In some complicated cases, it may be necessary to perform inferior petrosal sinus sampling under radiological guidance followed by stimulation tests. High levels of pituitary hormones in the petrosal sinus compared with a peripheral vein confirm the diagnosis of pituitary secreting hormones. The test is often used to differentiate pituitary dependent Cushing's disease from ectopic ACTH secretion. For example, small cell carcinoma of the lung. They can secrete ectopic ACTH. Higher ACTH levels in the petrosal sinus compared with venous ACTH after CRH stimulation confirms pituitary dependent Cushing's disease. Treatment. Non-functioning pituitary tumors or those associated with increased hormone production except for prolactinomas are usually treated surgically. Transphenoidal surgery, transcranial surgery are used. Transcranial surgery is very rare and it is used for very large tumors. Pituitary hormone deficiency should be treated by hormone replacement. Pituitary failure is usually associated with multiple hormonal deficiencies. Clinical disease of the anterior pituitary gland. This section discusses the effects of over and under production of a particular hormone. Abnormalities of growth hormone secretion. Growth hormone excess. In childhood or adolescence, growth hormone excess results in excessive growth spurt, increased size of feet and hands, general skeletal enlargement, increased skin thickness. If left untreated, growth hormone excess in this period of life leads to gigantism, the most serious consequence of the disease. In adults, growth hormone excess affects the skin, soft tissue and skeleton resulting in acromegaly which has the following features. Acromegalic phase that is the phase which has coarse facial features such as prominent supraorbital ridges, large nose, lower jaw pushed forward called prognathism, thickening of lips and tongue, dental malocclusion and widely spaced teeth, wide and large hands or feet due to enlargement of soft tissue, skin and cartilage, typically present with increasing glove size, tight fitting rings, increasing shoe size, deep voice, nerve entrapment such as carpal tunnel syndrome and increased sweating. Organomegaly can be seen such as goiter, cardiomegaly, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, 
कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ एक्रोमेगली इंक्लूड हाइपर टेंशन डायबिटीज ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप एपनिया इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ हार्ट डिसीज इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ कोलोनिक पॉलिप्स एंड कोलोनिक कार्सिनोमा एंड दीज मे बी द प्रेजेंटिंग फीचर ऑफ द डिसीज इन्वेस्टिगेशंस रैंडम ग्रोथ हार्मोन टेस्टिंग कैन बी डन अ रैंडम ग्रोथ हार्मोन ऑफ लेस देन वन मिली इंटरनेशनल यूनिट पर लीटर मेक्स द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एक्रोमेगाली अनलाइकली अ रैंडम ग्रोथ हार्मोन लेवल मोर देन वन मिली इंटरनेशनल यूनिट पर लीटर डज नॉट हेल्प इन मेकिंग अ डायग्नोसिस ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस टेस्ट इज परफॉर्म्ड फेलियर ऑफ ग्रोथ हार्मोन सप्रेशन आफ्टर जी टी टी सजेस्ट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एक्रोमेगाली इंसुलिन लाइक ग्रोथ फैक्टर आई जी एफ वन लेवल्स कैन बी परफॉर्म्ड दीज आर एलिवेटेड इन एक्रोमेगाली बट दिस इज मेनली यूज टू मॉनिटर द रेस्पॉन्स टू थेरेपी इमेजिंग पिट्यूटरी एम आर आई कैन बी डन दिस इज यूजली दिस यूजली शोज अ पिट्यूटरी ट्यूमर ट्रीटमेंट ट्रांसफिनॉइडल सर्जरी इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस रेडियोथेरेपी कैन बी यूज इन पेशेंट्स विथ फेल्ड सर्जरी और इफ सर्जरी इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट इंक्लूड्स सोमैटोस्टाटिन एनालॉग्स यूज इन पेशेंट्स विथ रेसिजुअल ट्यूमर पोस्ट सर्जरी और इन होम सर्जरी इज कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड इट इज एफेक्टिव एट रिड्यूसिंग ग्रोथ हार्मोन लेवल्स इन अराउंड सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स डोपोमिन एगोनिस्ट कैन बी यूज सच एज कैबरगोलिन ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन दीज आर एफेक्टिव इन माइनॉरिटी ऑफ पेशेंट्स पेग्विसोमंट is a relatively new and effective treatment that blocks the growth hormone receptor but has no effect on growth hormone levels the effect of this treatment on tumor size remains controversial monitoring response to treatment growth hormone day curve can be plotted mean growth hormone less than 5 milli international unit per liter defines cure from the disease igf1 levels can be used to monitor the response due to increased risk of colonic cancer acromegaly patients should undergo regular colonoscopy for early detection of the disease growth hormone deficiency in childhood growth hormone deficiency results in failure of growth thin skin hypoglycemia particularly in the presence of acth deficiency delayed puberty particularly in the presence of sex hormone deficiency in adults growth hormone deficiency results in non specific symptoms tiredness depression reduction in muscle mass and increase in fat mass the main clinical features of growth hormone excess and deficiency have been described above investigations investigations include glucagon stimulation test or insulin stress test failure of growth hormone to rise after these stimulation tests suggest growth hormone deficiency igf1 levels uh, which are low can be an aid in diagnosis however normal igf1 levels do not rule out the possibility of growth hormone deficiency imaging pituitary mri should be performed in subjects with growth hormone deficiency to rule out the possibility of pituitary tumor causing growth hormone de- deficiency by compressing growth hormone producing cells treatment childhood growth hormone deficiency can be treated with growth hormone replacement adult growth hormone deficiency only symptomatic patients are usually offered growth hormone replacement therapy abnormalities of acth secretion acth excess pituitary ho- tumors producing acth result in excessive cortisol production by the adrenals consequently leading to pituitary dependent cushing's syndrome or cushing's disease which must be differentiated from other causes of cushing's syndrome such as ectopic acth syndrome due to the presence of a malignant cells producing acth lung cancer for example adrenal tumors excess cortisol production is associated with suppression of acth production and therefore these tumors are usually referred to as non acth dependent cushing's syndrome pseudo cushing's disease excessive alcohol consumption or severe depression can result in symptoms and signs similar to cushing's syndrome differentiating this from real cushing's can sometimes be difficult or even for even 
an experienced endocrinologist. Investigations confirm the presence of excess cortisol. 24-hour urine cortisol can be used. High levels are suggestive of Cushing's syndrome. Midnight cortisol. In normal individuals, cortisol levels at midnight during sleep are undetectable. This test may be difficult to arrange as the patient needs to be admitted and a blood sample should be taken immediately after the patient is woken up. Overnight dexamethasone suppression test. Give 0.5 to 1 mg of dexamethasone at 11 o'clock at night and measure cortisol at 9 o'clock in the morning. Cortisol levels less than 50 nanomole per liter effectively rule out the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. Low dose dexamethasone suppression test Give 0.5 mg of dexamethasone every 6 hours for 2 days that is 8 doses and check cortisol levels thereafter which should be undetectable in the presence of in the absence of Cushing's syndrome. Differentiate between different causes of Cushing's syndrome. ACTH levels these are suppressed in adrenal Cushing's but detectable in pituitary Cushing's disease or cases due to ectopic ACTH production. High dose dexamethasone suppression test. Give 2 mg dexamethasone every 6 hours for 2 days. If cortisol is suppressed to more than 50% of basal value, it suggests a diagnosis of pituitary Cushing's disease. Imaging. MRI of the pituitary may show a pituitary tumor, but it can sometimes be normal. That is, the tumor may be too small to visualize. Petrosal sinus sampling. This may need to be undertaken in difficult cases to differentiate ectopic ACTH secretion from pituitary dependent Cushing's disease. Treatment of Cushing's disease. Transphenoidal surgery to remove the pituitary tumor can be done. Radiotherapy in relapsed disease or in those whom surgery is contraindicated. Adrenalectomy in difficult cases to stop cortisol secretion, this can be performed, but it is very rare. ACTH deficiency. This results in the failure of cortisol production by the adrenal glands. The symptoms include failure of growth in children, malaise and tiredness, weight loss, hypoglycemia, hypotension, which can be life-threatening, confusion. The main clinical features of ACTH excess and deficiency have been described. Investigations. Pituitary stimulation tests fail to show adequate rise in serum cortisol levels. Insulin st stress tests or glucagon stimulation test can be done. The possibility of primary hypoadrenalism should be ruled out, in which case there is low cortisol and high ACTH. ACTH deficiency is usually part of panhypopituitarism and therefore deficiency of other hormones should be investigated. In subjects with pure ACTH deficiency, a, cortisol, a corticotrophin releasing hormone CRH test may be necessary to confirm the diagnosis. Failure of ACTH and cortisol to raise confirm ACTH deficiency. Imaging Pituitary MRI to investigate the possibility of pituitary tumor. Treatment Cortisol replacement is necessary and usually oral hydrocortisone is used in 2 or 3 divided doses. Abnormalities of prolactin secretion Prolactin excess Prolactin excess is seen in prolactinomas and they are the commonest functioning pituitary tumors. Microprolactinomas are detected in up to 10% of the population in post-mortem studies. Serum prolactin concentration may be elevated due to a large number of factors which should be differentiated from prolactinoma. Causes of raised plasma prolactin concentration seem to be a popular question in postgraduate medical examinations. Clinical presentation include uh, galactoria, sexual dysfunction, decreased libido, menstrual irregularities, local tumor effects. The causes of high plasma prolactin levels include physiological 
pregnancy, nipple stimulation, sexual intercourse, stress. Pituitary tumors may cause high prolactin levels such as prolactinoma, non-functioning tumors. Elevation of prolactin is usually modest due to stock compression and lack of inhibition by dopamine. Drugs such can cause uh, prolactin, uh, hyperprolactinemia such as antiemetics, antidepressants and antipsychotics, opiates, anti-HIV treatment. Hypothalamic disease such as tumors compressing the hypothalamus, infiltrative diseases such as sarcoidosis, large pituitary tumors causing stock compression can cause hyperprolactinemia. Metabolic causes such as hypothyroidism, chronic renal disease can also cause increased prolactin levels. Investigations include raised serum prolactin is suggestive of the diagnosis. Provided other causes for raised prolactin are ruled out. Imaging MRI of the pituitary usually shows a pituitary tumor, particularly in those with high prolactin levels. In some patients, no tumor can be identified, but this does not rule out the diagnosis of prolactinoma. Tumors can be too small. In patients with large pituitary tumor and only mild elevation of prolactin, a non-functioning pituitary adenoma rather than a prolactinoma should be suspected. Raised prolactin in this case is due to stock compression and escape from the inhibitory effects of the dopamine. Treatment Pituitary prolactinomas are usually treated medically with dopamine agonists such as cabergolin or bromocryptin which result in both reduced hormone secretion and shrinkage of the tumor. Surgery is reserved for severe cases that are not responding to medical treatment. These are fortunately very rare. It should be noted that prolactinomas are the only pituitary tumors where medical therapy rather than surgery is first line treatment and therefore it is important to make the correct diagnosis in these cases. Prolactin deficiency. Deficiency of prolactin results in failure of lactation in women with no other systemic effects. This is usually part of other pituitary hormonal deficiency, can result from severe blood loss during childbirth resulting in pituitary infarction which is called Sheehan syndrome. There is no prolactin replacement therapy and deficiency of this hormone is not treated. Abnormalities in TSH secretion TSH excess TSH excess is rare and is usually due to pituitary tumor that is TSH oma. In re it results in features of hyperthyroidism. Clinical presentation is discussed later. Mass effect of pituitary tumor particularly uh, if the tumors are large. Investigations include uh, FT4 and TSH. High FT4 with high or normal TSH in subjects not, not on thyroxine replacement is suggestive of TSH producing pituitary tumor. Imaging such as MRI of the pituitary can be done. This shows usually a large tumor. Treatment Transphenoidal surgery is the choice. Somatostatin analogs for recurrent or incompletely removed tumors can be used. Radiotherapy in case of recurrent tumor or unsuccessful surgery can also be used. TSH deficiency. TSH deficiency causes hypothyroidism, usually associated with other pituitary hormone deficiencies. The clinical features of hypothyroidism are discussed in the chapter on thyroid. Investigations include low FT4 with low or normal TSH is suggestive of a TSH deficiency and Pituitary gland should be fully evaluated for deficiencies of other pituitary hormones. Treatment Thyroid hormone replacement in the form of synthetic T4 that is levothyroxine. It should be noted that TSH measurements cannot be relied upon for monitoring the thyroxine dose which is simply done by measuring FT4 levels and assessing the patient clinically. In patients with combined ACTH and TSH deficiency, cortisol therapy should be started first and thyroxine replacement introduced a few days later to avoid precipitating an adrenal crisis. Abnormalities of gonadotrophin secretion 
gonadotrophin excess. Tumors producing FSH or LH are extremely rare and usually behave similarly to a non-functioning pituitary tumor. In men, FSH secreting tumors may result in testicular enlargement. Gonadotrophin deficiency. This results in sex hormone deficiency. Clinical presentation includes decreased libido, impotence and menstrual irregularities, loss of secondary sexual hair, loss of muscle mass in men, in children delayed puberty and sexual infantilism, primary amenorrhea. Investigations include low testosterone in men and estradiol in women with low or normal gonadotrophin levels suggest secondary gonadal failure. Imaging Pituitary MRI should be performed in subjects with secondary gonadal failure. Treatment Treat the underlying cause sex hormone replacement with testosterone, estrogen and progesterone. Non-functioning pituitary adenoma These are the commonest of the pituitary macroadenomas. They present clinically with mass effect, visual field defect, headaches, cranial nerve palsies, hypopituitarism resulting in growth hormone, ACTH, TSH and gonadotrophin deficiencies to variable degrees with the clinical manifestations which have been described already. Investigations Static pituitary function tests such as TFTs, sex hormones and gonadotrophin levels, prolactin. Prolactin may be mildly elevated in non-functioning tumors. See section on prolactinomas. Stimulation tests. Insulin stress test or glucagon stimulation test to assess cortisol reserve and growth hormone reserve can be performed. Suppression tests. Only if there is a clinical suspicion of Cushing syndrome or acromegaly can be performed. Imaging. Pituitary MRI shows a pituitary macroadenoma. Treatment of pituitary adenoma or non-functioning tumor uh, includes surgery which is usually transphenoidal but transcranial surgery may be needed for large tumors. Radiotherapy for recurrence, hormonal replacement therapy, these patients usually end up with a mixture of pituitary hormonal deficiencies which should be replaced. Pituitary tumors may be functional which uh, secrete one or more hormones resulting in galactoria, uh, acromegaly, Cushing syndrome, hyperthyroidism or non-functional causing mass effect and anterior pituitary failure. This can be partial that is deficiency of one or two hormones or total that is involving all pituitary hormones. Suspected pituitary tumor should be investigated with hormonal tests to rule out hyper or hyposecretion of hormones as well as imaging tests. Other causes of pituitary failure Pituitary infarction characterized by sudden onset headache, cranial nerve palsies, symptoms and signs of cortisol deficiency can be causes of pituitary failure. Pituitary infiltration by sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis can also cause pituitary failure. Trauma, pituitary infection such as abscess or tuberculosis, head irradiation, unknown causes. Treat treatment of pituitary failure includes one or a cocktail of hormone replacement therapies. Steroids such as hydrocortisone. Anyone with suspected pituitary failure should be given hydrocortisone and investigated later. Failure to give hydrocortisone in suspected deficiency may result in death. Thyroxine should only be given after adequate cortisol replacement. Testosterone, estrogen and progesterone can be replaced. Growth hormone, this is routinely given to children with growth hormone deficiency but in adults only those with symptoms receive this expensive form of treatment. The posterior pituitary. In contrast to the anterior pituitary, the posterior pituitary does not synthesize hormones but stores hormones produced in the hypothalamic region. These hormones include antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Abnormalities of antidiuretic hormone secretion Arginine vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. This hormone is secreted secondary to osmotic changes. 
mediates free water reabsorption in the kidneys. Excessive ADH secretion syndrome or also called, uh, called as syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. This is not uncommonly seen on the medical wards and results in delusional hyponatremia, low plasma osmolarity and inappropriately high urine osmolarity secondary to water reabsorption in the kidneys. Causes of inappropriate ADH secretion known as SIADH are summarized as below. Causes include tumors such as lung malignancy, hematological malignancies, central nervous system infection such as meningitis, encephalitis, head injury, vascular disorders, respiratory infections or positive pressure ventilation, drugs such as chemotherapy, anti-epileptics such as carbamazine, oral hypoglycemic, chlorpropamide, antipsychotics, endocrine abnormalities such as hypothyroidism, metabolic uh, diseases such as acute intermittent porphyria, investigations. Investigations include hyponatremia is commonly seen in hospitalized patients. A common knee-jerk reaction is to label these patients as having SIADH and start fluid restriction which can be detrimental if the patient is not, not assessed properly. It should be remembered that patients with SIADH are euvolemic and therefore it is important to rule out dehydration before starting investigation for SIADH. Are they on diuretics? Is there a history of recent fluid loss? It is also important to rule out fluid overload before starting investigation for SIADH. Is there advanced heart, liver or renal failure? In euvolemic patients, SIADH should be suspected in the presence of hyponatremia with low plasma osmolarity, inappropriately high urine osmolarity, high urinary sodium excretion. In patients with suspected SIADH, we need to exclude hypothyroidism, hypoadrenalism, which can be done by short synacthen test. Once the diagnosis of SIADH is made, it is necessary to establish the cause. Careful history and examination of the patient can be taken. Double check drug history. CT, head, chest and abdomen are frequently requested to rule out malignant causes. Treatment. In confirmed SIADH, restrict oral fluid to 750 to 1500 ml of oral fluid per day. Treat the cause. Demeclocycline, which induces nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, can help in difficult cases. ADH deficiency. This results in the passage of large volume of dilute urine resulting in polyuria, nocturia, thirst, enuresis in children. Causes of ADH deficiency, also known as cranial diabetes insipidus, are congenital or familial acquired such as head injury, tumors infiltrating the posterior pituitary, infiltrative conditions such as sarcoidosis or histiocytosis, infections such as meningitis, encephalitis or tuberculosis, vascular, idiopathic, etc. Functional ADH deficiency may occur, in, occur if the kidneys fail to respond to the hormone. ADH production is normal. This is called nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. It may be congenital or familial acquired such as due to drugs which may be lithium or demeclocycline, electrolyte abnormalities, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia, chronic renal disease, etc. Abnormalities of oxytocin secretion. In women, oxytocin helps contraction of the pregnant uterus helps contraction of breast duct smooth muscles aiding breastfeeding. Deficiency of this hormone has no effect on parturition or breastfeeding. In men, the role of this hormone is unclear. Special cases in pituitary disease. What is pituitary apoplexy? This is caused by infarction of the pituitary gland consequently resulting in failure of hormone production can occur in patients with large pituitary tumors. Any individual 
with known or suspected pituitary tumor complaining of sudden onset severe headache with or without cranial nerve palsies of third fourth and sixth nerve should be suspected as having pituitary apoplexy urgent mri of the pituitary should be requested these patients should be given parenteral steroids what is craniopharyngioma a tumor arising from the epithelial remnants of ratke's pouch can be present at any age and half the subjects are children clinical presentation is similar to a non functioning pituitary adenoma the presence of calcification in the pituitary tumor should raise the suspicion of craniopharyngioma treated surgically but recurrence rates are high what is lymphocytic hypophysitis a rare inflammatory condition of the pituitary likely to be autoimmune in origin results in pituitary hormonal failure and can cause mass effect spontaneous recovery may occur usually treated with replacement of deficient hormones this concludes chapter on pituitary gland chapter 2 the thyroid anatomy the thyroid is composed of a midline isthmus just below the cricoid cartilage a right and a left lobe extending from the isthmus laterally thyroid cells are arranged in follicles and produce thyroid hormones which are stored in the lumen of the follicle the thyroid also contains c cells which produce calcitonin physiology iodine is an essential component of thyroid hormones the thyroid gland traps iodine from the plasma and process mediated by the sodium iodide symporter iodine is then organified and iodothyronins thyroid hormones are formed a process mediated by the enzyme thyroid peroxidase or tpo thyroid hormones are stored in thyroid follicles bound to thyroglobulin in response to demand thyroglobulin is internalized by thyroid follicular cells and thyroid hormones are liberated into blood stream thyroid hormone secretion is constituted of 20% of t3 and 80% of t4 t4 is converted in peripheral tissue to the active hormone that is t3 through the activation or the action of deiodinase enzymes thyroid hormones are bound to plasma proteins thyroxine binding globulin and albumin and their levels can be influenced by plasma protein concentrations therefore free thyroid hormone levels should be measured in cases of suspected thyroid hormone abnormalities pathophysiology of the thyroid gland disorders of the thyroid gland include hormonal hypersecretion that is hyperthyroidism with or without thyroid gland enlargement or thyroid goiter hormonal hyposecretion or hypothyroidism with or without thyroid goiter thyroid nodules or goiter with normal thyroid hormone thyroid cancers an approach to a patient with suspected thyroid disease a proper history is important particularly in relation to symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism in the case of thyroid nodules or goiter recent changes in size recent hoarse voice compressive symptoms that is difficulty in breathing or swallowing can be discussed examination of the thyroid assessment of thyroid status general is the patient fidgety or agitated facial appearances can be noted is the patient's clothing appropriate wearing a t-shirt in december suggests hyperthyroidism hand tremor best checked by placing a piece of paper on outstretched arms sweaty or dry skin check palms feel pulse tachycardia atrial fibrillation or bradycardia can be checked assess for lid lag check for signs of proximal myopathy tendon reflexes ask the patient to kneel on a chair and check ankle reflexes assessment of the thyroid gland inspection observe for any neck swelling 
asked the patient to swallow and observe for a neck mass that moves with swallowing. A midline structure moving by tongue protrusion suggests a thyroglossal cyst. Palpation. Uh, palpate the thyroid starting in the isthmus and moving out laterally and upwards. Use the pulp, not the tip of your fingers. Feel the neck for lymphadenopathy. Percussion gives limited information about the possibility of retrosternal extension of a goiter. Auscultation Bruyi over the thyroid gland suggests a diagnosis of Graves' disease due to increased gland vascularity. Check for Pemberton's sign. Rising both arms above the head results in venous obstruction, which can be seen in large goiters with retrosternal extension. Assessment for signs of extrathyroidal disease suspected in suspected Graves diseases. Graves ophthalmopathy includes proptosis, periorbital edema, conjunctival inject injection, chemosis, corneal ulceration, inability to fully close the eyes, pre-tibial myxedema, thyroid acropachy, etc. Hyperthyroidism The causes of hyperthyroidism include Graves' disease, toxic nodule or toxic multinodular goiter, thyroiditis, TSH secreting tumor, exogenous thyroid hormone administration, hyperemesis gravidarum, choriocarcinoma, struma ovary, Thyroid hormone resistance. Graves' disease has 80% frequency and the etiology is thyroid stimulating antibodies. Diagnosis includes clinical examination, thyroid autoantibodies, thyroid uptake scan in uncertain cases. Toxic nodule or toxic multinodular goiter has a frequency of 15%. Activating mutations in TSH receptor and GS alpha protein is the etiology. Diagnosis is based on clinical examination and thyroid uptake scan. Thyroiditis results in 2 to 4 percent. Autoimmune and viral or drug related etiology is commonly found. Drugs such as amiodarone can be related. Diagnosis includes clinical examination, thyroid uptake scan, ESR. TSH secreting tumor is present in less than 1%. And diagnosis is based on raised TSH and thyroid hormones and pituitary imaging. Exogenous thyroid hormone administration presence is variable. Excess ingestion of thyroid hormones is the etiology. And it is based on the diagnosis is based on clinical assessment. Hyperemesis gravidarum is rare cause of the hyperthyroidism. Raised beta HCG can be the etiology which mimics TSH action. Clinical assessment, absence of thyroid autoimmunity, known pregnancy, imaging of the pelvis are used for diagnosis. Struma ovary. It's a rare uh, reason for Hyperthyroidism, ectopic ovarian thyroid tissue is the etiology. Diagnosis is based on clinical assessment, thyroid or pelvic uptake scan, imaging of the pelvis. Thyroid hormone resistance is very rare and etiology is pituitary resistance to thyroid hormones. Diagnosis is based on clinical assessment and family history. Graves' disease. The commonest cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. It is, it is present in 80% of the cases. An autoimmune condition characterized by the presence of thyroid-stimulating antibodies, mimicking the action of TSH and resulting in hyperthyroidism, can be associated with extrathyroidal manifestations, clinical presentation. Patient usually presents with classical symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Neck palpation reveals a smooth, uniform goiter in the majority of cases. Around half of the patients will have extrathyroidal manifestations of the disease. Investigations confirm the presence of hyperthyroidism by suppressed TSH, raised thyroid hormones that is T4 and T3, 
detection of thyroid stimulating antibodies not essential for making the diagnosis and usually reserved for atypical cases these are positive in 95 to 99% of graves disease cases depending on the type and assay used in uncertain cases that is absence of a goiter or a symmetrical goiter negative antibodies thyroid uptake scan can be performed this shows uniform uptake of technetium or iodine treatment graves disease can be treated with antithyroid drugs radioactive iodine and surgery symptomatic treatment is also possible in patients with severe symptoms beta adrenergic blocking agents propranolol can be used but these are only required in a minority antithyroid drugs that is thionamides can be used in they include propyl thiouracil carbimazole and its active metabolite metabolite methimazole these agents interfere with the action of thyroid peroxidase thereby inhibiting the thyroid hormone production antithyroid medications or drugs can be given as titration regime usually for 18 months enough antithyroid drug is given to keep the thyroid hormones in the normal range block and replace regimen usually for 6 months a large dose of antithyroid drug is given to fully block the thyroid hormone production and thyroxine replacement therapy is added to ensure adequate plasma thyroid hormone levels after 6 to 18 months treatment is stopped and disease remission is achieved in less than 50% radioactive iodine safe and effective treatment up to 90% respond after one dose used as a second line in europe but frequently as first line in america radioactive iodine treatment destroys the thyroid gland and can take up to 6 months to have the full effect in induces long term hypothyroidism patients need to be warned that they will potentially need lifelong treatment with thyroxine contraindications include pregnancy which is an absolute contraindication relative contraindications include active eye disease eye disease may worsen after radioactive iodine therapy surgery this is reserved for those with large goiter personal preference severe hypothyroidism and intolerance to antithyroid drugs rare presentations thyroid storm an extreme form of thyrotoxicosis presenting with fever cardiovascular collapse confusion psychosis severe weakness and even coma this is life threatening emergency that requires urgent medical treatment apathetic hyperthyroidism the adrenergic hyperactivity manifestations are absent and this presentation can be confused with depression which usually occurs in elderly side effects of antithyroid drugs a granulocytosis the most serious complication and all patients are advised to immediately report to their physician in cases they develop a temperature sore throat or mouth ulcers a granulocytosis with either ptu or carbimazole represents a contraindication to the use of these agents minor side effects such as a rash musculoskeletal pain deranged liver function can be seen if these occur it is possible to switch between antithyroid drugs toxic solitary nodule or toxic multinodular goiter around 15% of the hyperthyroid patients have a toxic solitary nodule or toxic multinodular goiter clinical presentation symptoms and signs of hyperthyroidism can be present neck palpation reveals an irregular goiter or a thyroid nodule there are no extra thyroidal signs and symptoms investigations confirm the presence of biochemical hyperthyroidism thyroid uptake scan show one or more thyroid nodules with increased uptake which are often referred to as hot nodules hyperthyroidism due to toxic nodule must be differentiated from graves disease and a cold nodule using an uptake scan 
due to the relatively high prevalence of malignancy in graves disease associated cold nodules treatment toxic solitary nodule or toxic multinodular goiter can be treated with antithyroid drugs but these diseases relapse once medical treatment is stopped the best treatment option is radioactive iodine which often restores euthyroidism surgery is also an option but is reserved for a minority of the patients usually those with large disfiguring goiters fine needle aspiration fnac is only required in selected cases malignancy in toxic nodules is rare